with the, the torque, with the torque variety stuff I talked about last time. Let's get the show on the road. And here I'm going to follow some old papers of mine, namely a tropical toolkit and my paper with David Helm. And the ideas are based on a like a reading of David Spire's thesis. And like, if you want a quick introduction to this stuff, you can probably still read my papers if you want like a proper introduction and with what I feel like is the right framework, there's Walter Gubler's Guide to Tropicalization. All right, and what tropicalization is, is um, a procedure that takes as input an algebraic subvariety of an algebraic torus and spits out a balanced weighted rational polyhedral complex in Rn. And I guess when I say the algebraic torus, I mean k star to the n. So here, k is going to be a discretely valued field. O is going to be a valuation ring. Um, there's the algebraic closure of K and the valuation on K extends to the algebraic closure and is valued in the rationals. And I'm gonna pick out a uniformizer of K where the valuation of this uniformizer pi is one and then the quotient is the residue field um, little K. And probably I wanna take the residue field to be closed. And I'm gonna suppose that there, for convenience, and this really isn't necessary, that there's a setwise section to the valuation. So in other words, there's a map from the rationals to the algebraic closure of K given by, um, I'm gonna write it as pi to the A, that may not make sense when I write pi to, the, to some rational number A, that means I'm picking out an element of valuation A. Um, the way to do this, um, without, um, the way to do this without picking a section is through Sam Payne's torsors from his fibers of tropicalization paper, but I'm trying to avoid, I'm okay with making some non-canonical choices. All right, and the example you should have in mind is where K is the field of formal Laurent series, meaning, there are only, it's a power series with only finitely many negative exponents, but it's a power series on the positive exponents. And I guess I wanna call the uniformizer T. And I'm gonna look at the lowest, I'm gonna mandate that the lowest order term has non-zero coefficients. So the valuation of this element X is the smallest exponent. And if I take the algebraic closure of that, um, elements there are, are represented as formal Pazu series. So those are like formal Laurent series, except you're allowed fractional exponents with bounded denominator. So I guess the point with taking the algebraic closure of that is you need to adjoin the nth root of t. And that's good enough. You just have to solve the equation x to the n minus t. And once you can solve that, you get something that's algebraically closed. I guess provided this residue field c is closed. All right. And taking the lowest order term as your, or the lowest order exponent as your valuation, um, gives you this version of the valuation way of writing the ultrametric triangle inequality. The valuation of x plus y is greater than or equal to the minimum of the valuations of x and the, val the, the valuation of x and the valuation of y. And this is an inequality because you could have two power series that when you add them together, the lowest order terms vanish. Like here, these elements are both valuation negative one, but if you add them, this valuation two. And this valuation is like a logarithm in the sense that the valuation of the product is equal to the sum of the valuation of each factors. And I write k star for k minus the minus zero. In the previous lecture, I was calling such objects gm. I'm not gonna be so fancy today. <laughs> 
And K star to the n, I'm gonna call the algebraic torus. Why do I call it that? Well, it's analogous to S1 to the n. And here, if you were trying to define such a thing like that algebraically, it would be like C star to the n, and that contracts onto S1 to the n. And then I'm gonna have a subvariety of the algebraic torus. And I define the tropicalization to be the following is I look at X, like I base change X to the algebraic closure. I look at the pointwise valuation of all the elements, and then I take the top the topological closure. Okay, and I call that the tropicalization, but you know, if you give a talk about tropical geometry to undergrads, you say tropical geometry is what you get when you replace the, addition, the operations of addition and multiplication with min and plus. So what's the connection? All right, so let's look at hypersurfaces in both situations, in the tropicalization situation and in the, the synthetic situation. So I'm gonna define the operations of min and plus a funny plus B means the minimum of A and B, and A funny times B is equal to A plus B. And you should think about that as what happens to the valuations, except you're replacing this greater than or equal to with min. So you're somehow assuming that there's no cancellation. And I'm gonna define a hypersurface. I'm gonna be have to be really, really careful with the support of a polynomial. So I'm gonna let A, Script A be an exponent set. And here, when I say polynomial, I mean a Laurent polynomial. So the coefficients can be, or the exponents can be negative. And I'm gonna take it in n variables. And a tropical polynomial is what you think it is. It's a polynomial in these funny operations. So it's this tropical sum of a bunch of terms of the form a constant tropical times x raised to the power a. Here, x is an n-tuple of real numbers, and a is an n-tuple of integers. And here, this exponent of a tuple just means you take the exponent of each factor, or of each entry, and multiply them together, all of that tropically. And here, the coefficients are real numbers. So I could write something like this, 0 funny plus x1, funny plus x2, funny plus one, funny plus x1, funny plus x2. And here I'm taking the coefficient to here is secretly zero. So I'm taking like zero plus x1 here. All right, and in normal person talk, this means the minimum of zero, x1, x2, and one plus x1 plus x2. And then if I have such a polynomial, the tropical hypersurface is the set of points where the minimum is achieved at least twice. So I look at each of these tropical monomials and I look at the condition that one of them is equal to another and it's less than or equal to every other one. So here I'm signaling out the minimal entries. Here's where x1 is equal to zero, and that's smaller than x2 and one plus x1 plus x2. And here's where x2 equals, where x2 is equal to zero, and so on. And here are the vertices, zero, zero, and negative one, negative one. So you'll notice at, along the edges or rays, the min is achieved exactly twice in this particular case. And then at vertices, it's achieved more than twice. So for instance, at this vertex, you would have x1 is equal to x2 is equal to zero, which happens to be less than or equal to one plus x1 plus x2. All right, so that's a tropical hypersurface. They can also be described in, in terms of Newton subdivisions. And I'm gonna get shot for drawing it like this. This is a picture, this is, there's an approach to torque varieties coming from polytopes. 
And then the analog of polyhedral subdivisions is Newton subdivisions where you're subdividing the polytope and then the tropical hypersurface is dual to it. And I'm drawing it over it. It doesn't live in the same vector space though. All right, questions, concerns, complaints. All right, and so if we study classical hypersurfaces, we can talk about tropicalizing them. So given a classical Laurent polynomial with coefficients in K, where the exponents are integer powers of the Xi's, or the, the monomials are made up of the integer powers of the Xi's, so if it's written like this, I can tropicalize it by replacing the coefficients with their valuation and the usual operations are funny operations. So if I were to feed you this monomial here, or sorry, this polynomial, the valuation of this three is zero here, Valuation of one is zero, and then we've got an x, valuation of one is zero, and we've got a y, valuation of t is one, and we've got an x and a y, it would tropicalize to the, this guy. And the zero locus of this polynomial, I'm going to treat it as a hypersurface in k star to the n. This happened to be a, a normal, a usual polynomial, not a Laurent polynomial but I'm only, because I'm allowing negative powers, I really only care about the zero locus in K star to the N. All right, and so I showed you two ways of defining tropicalization for hypersurfaces. One is to take the classical hypersurface and then take the image under the point-wise valuation map and then close up. And the other way is to define, to tropicalize the defining polynomial and take the, the tropical hypersurface. And these coincide by a theorem, I guess it's of Kapranov. And you're showing two sets are equal. Um, one direction is easy. This set is contained in that set because if you were to look at a point in the usual hypersurface, this means the function, van the polynomial vanishes on it, which means you've got this equation and I can, I can view everything in sight as a formal power series or formal Laurent series in T. And I only care about the lowest order power of T that occurs. And for this to be zero on the right-hand side, the coefficient of the lowest power of T must be zero, which means there has to be some cancellation among these monomials. So the minimum power has to occur at least twice so that means the tropicalization of X is contained in the tropical hypersurface. Um, the other containment looks harder. Um, what you can do is you can reduce it by slicing off hypersurfaces to one variable case. And then you need to know the fact that the Puzo series is algebraically closed, which is essentially a Newton's method argument. And I should probably say that Pouzeau series are called Pouzeau series. They're due to Newton. I think he, I think he may have even known that they were algebraically closed, but I digress. Questions? All right, and now I'm gonna discuss another way of thinking about this coming from combinatorial algebraic geometry. So this is very close to the theory of Grubner bases. And this, these are initial forms and degenerations. So given a Laurent polynomial and a weight, which is gonna be a vector in Rn, I could define the initial form in Wf as follows. So I'm going to look at the monomials that occur in F, and I define the weight of the monomial to be the valuation of the coefficient plus W dotted with A. So this is really the 
evaluation of the monomial CX, X to the A, where the evaluation of X is the weight vector W. So given a W, I look at all the monomials of minimal W weight, and I call this minimal W weight W prime. And now what I do is the following. I, I look at Did I do this wrong? Oh, no, no, this is fine. This is fine. Um, so what I do is I basically do a change of variables. I replace x by pi to the w x, which really means by x is an n tuple x1 up to xn, and I replace it by pi w1 x1 up to pi wn xn. So I plug that in. And now I notice that the minimal terms are going to contribute overall a weight of pi to the w prime. So I multiply by pi to the minus w prime, and that cancels out. So you should think about what would happen if you were to plug in a point of valuation zero for x. Like all the coefficient, all the components of x are valuation zero. Well, then you get this would, when you sum over, this would give you something of weight w prime, but we cancel that out. So really it's cutting out something when you take this reduction, it's giving you something defined over the residue field. And it's really what the situation looks like if I were to plug in something where this X has valuation zero, which means it's really what's happening if you're plugging in a point that has valuation W. So I'm like locally zooming in on some behavior of the defining polynomial. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have this guy here, finding polynomial here, and I'm gonna take the initial degeneration at negative one comma negative one. So I plug in t to the minus one x and t to the minus one y, and, And when I do, I get this, um, this one term, and I multiply by t to the first, which is the minimal valuation, um, or it's minus the minimal valuation. And that's gonna make this one disappear because that's not of minimal weight. And then what's left over is of weight zero. So I end up getting x plus y plus x times y. And morally speaking, this is only defined up to multiplication by k star to the n, by the algebraic torus over the residue field. And the reason why is I had to choose that section of, of the valuation. All right, and so what this is really doing is it's picking out the terms of minimal valuation. And we saw that the tropicalization where the points where the minimum was achieved at least twice. And so really what's happening is that the initial form of, of F at W is not a monomial if and only if W is in the hypersurface associated with the tropicalization of F. And I can extend this definition to from hypersurfaces or from single polynomials to ideals. So if I have an ideal in the Laurent series ring, I can define the initial ideal of I to be what you get if you take the initial form of every polynomial in I. And you may have seen this in the theory of Grobner bases where you take an initial ideal. Usually in Grobner bases, you have a term order instead of a weight vector. Here, we're secretly using the term order induced by the weight vector. 
All right, so let me draw you a map of the initial forms of our hypersurface. So we already computed what it was for negative one, negative one. It's this guy. Here's what it is for zero, zero. And then on the rays, you have um, binomials for my initial forms. Now, you should be thinking this looks like a lot, this looks a lot like some of the pictures I drew yesterday. Like if I were to fill in these top dimensional cones, this looks like it defines a torque. It's a polyhedral subdivision of the plane. So it looks like it ought to define a torque scheme. So we're going to work our way towards that notion. All right, everyone happy? All right, and now I can play this same game in fancier language if W is in the value, if W isn't just a real vector, but a vector in the value group of the field to the nth. Um, I can start with a sub variety multiplied by pi to the negative W and then base change from O to K. And actually I'm lying. Like, give me one sec. Here's what pi to the negative W means. And here, when I say closure, this means the scheme theoretic closure of K star to the N in the multiplicative group over O. So technically what this means is X is cut out by a bunch of polynomials, a bunch of Laurent polynomials in K star to the defined over K. But every polynomial, now O remember is the valuation ring of k, so you should think of it like this. It's not a Laurent polynomial. It's it's a it's a formal power or o oh, the coefficients aren't sorry the coefficients of the form of the Laurent polynomials defined over O are not formal Laurent series. They're formal power series. So what I could do is I could take the defining equation of x and the the coefficients of each polynomial in the defining equations are formal Laurent series, but I can multiply by power of t to make them formal power series. So then I can make it seem like x is defined over O. And when I take the Zariski closure, like meaning I look at the, the zero locus of these new polynomials, I get something defined in the, in the multiplicative group over O. And so this is a scheme theoretic way of talking about initial generations. And in fact, these two definitions agree that the if X is defined by an ideal I, taking the initial gen generation of X is the same thing as taking the zero locus of the initial ideal of I, both defined with respect to W. All right, I'm gonna pause and caffeinate. All right, so now let me talk about setwise properties of tropicalization because I've defined tropicalization a bunch of different ways. And we have some intuition coming from hypersurfaces. Let's see if it extends to general sub varieties. So if I have a sub variety defined by an ideal, yes, the tropicalization. It's, it's equal to the tropicalization of each of the defined, the intersection of the tropicalizations of each of the, of the zero locus of the defining polynomials. So it happens to equal the tropical hypersurface of tropicalization of each element of the ideal. And then there's another characterization of, of tropical varieties, which now goes by the name, the fundamental theorem of tropical geometry. And here, if I have a sub variety X, the tropicalization of X is equal to the set of weight vectors 
so that the initial degeneration is not the unit ideal, meaning the variety cut out by the initial degeneration is non empty. And this theorem is due to Jan Dreisma. Um, and there's various proofs by Jan, me, Sam Payne, McClog and Sturmfels. It's been implemented as an algorithm by the Markvigs. And there are many passive aggressive comments about the fundamental theorem of tropical geometry in the literature. All right. And one direction is actually pretty easy. You reduce the points. The other is slightly trickier. I know a proof that comes from dimensional reduction by intersecting with piper surfaces. But there are other proofs. Jan Dreismas, which is the first correct proof, goes through rigid analytic geometry. All right. And so this is telling us that the tropical variety or the tropicalization is the weight vectors for which the initial degeneration is not the unit ideal. In other words, that the initial degenerations are non-empty. And here I wanna approach tropical geometry from the following philosophy, that the tropicalization of X is a map of the different non-empty initial degenerations. And which is kind of true. If X is defined over C, trop X is a fan. And that's a, a special case that should remind you of torque varieties and what's happening over valued fields should remind you of torque schemes. All right, and we have the following theorem, which I believe is due to David Spire might be due to Bernd Sternfels, some subset of those guys, maybe them together. Um, given a subvariety X of an algebraic torus, there's a polyhedral complex sigma such that if two weight vectors are in the relative interior of the same polyhedron in sigma, the initial degenerations are translate by the algebraic torus over the residue field. And we said the initial degenerations were only defined up to this type of translation. So really it's saying if two weight vectors are in the same polyhedron, the initial degenerations are the same. All right, and remember the tropicalization is the set of initial degenerations that are non-empty. So this says that trop X is a union of cells of sigma. Oh, and this proof goes, I, the proof I know goes through Hilbert points. Um, there is also a proof that presumably goes through Gribner bases or universal Gribner bases. All right, and here's another theorem that if X is purely D-dimensional, then the tropicalization of X is purely D-dimensional. All right, now, what can we say about what the initial degeneration looks like based on which cell W lies in? All right, here's a straightforward observation. If W is in the relative interior of a polyhedron P, then the initial degeneration is invariant under translation by a particular algebraic torus. And the algebraic torus is the one whose co-character group is given by the span of the defining polyhedron, or the span of the polyhedron in which W lies in its relative interior. So let's go back to this picture say. So here, this, this initial degeneration comes from a one dimensional, a one dimensional cell. So therefore it should be invariant under a one dimensional torus. And indeed this is defined as X two equals minus one. 
So the torus it's invariant under is dilating the x1 factor. And you'll notice that this ray is in the x1 direction. Here, this, this ray is in the x2 direction. Initial degeneration is cut out by x1 equals minus one, and it's invariant under dilation of the x2 coordinate. And here, this is, this guy is cut out by x1 equals minus x2, and this is invariant under the dilation that has the same effect on x1 and on x2. All right, so that's what that theorem means. So that tells you, okay, so this is particularly between this theorem and this theorem, we have a particularly nice description for initial degeneration corresponding to top dimensional cells. So the initial degeneration is going to be d-dimensional and it's invariant under a d-dimensional torus, which means it's supported on a finite union of d-dimensional tori. Now it may have a non-reduced structure, but that's okay. But so, but the underlying scheme or the underlying set looks like finitely many translations of a, a torus H. So if I wanna know, so what I can do is I can write down the underlying cycle of the initial degeneration as such. So here, this means that our torus is H, we translate a point P by the torus, or we translate the torus by the point P. And then there's some multiplicity MI, which is coming from the non-reduced structure. And I define a weight on the polyhedron by summing up the multiplicities. And here I can put this weight on the cell P. So here in every case, everything was uh, connected and reduced. It was all single a single torus for the initial degeneration. So these are all one. Now, if I were to have this polynomial, one plus x squared plus y, the initial, here's what the tropicalization looks like. And the initial degeneration corresponding to this ray is x squared plus y. So if you were to look at the equation x squared equals y, that ends up having multiplicity too. You plug in a given value of y, there's two possibilities for x. Um, so, wait a minute. Sorry, uh, I lied. I was looking at the wrong one. It's like, this doesn't look right. Sorry, if you look at this guy, sorry, this ray, x squared plus one plus x squared, um, the zero locus is x is equal to plus or minus one, which gives you two translations of the torus in the y direction. Sorry, it's too early in the morning. So here, this ray has multiplicity two, these each have multiplicity one. And yeah, it's been a long time since I've done this stuff. All right, and that leads us to the balancing condition. And balancing condition also called the zero tension condition is what would happen if you're, in this particular case, if you sit at this origin and you pull along the direction of the primitive integer vector on this ray with force one, with this one force one and this because it has multiplicity two, with force two, this vertex doesn't go anywhere. All right, and to define it, I'm gonna to need to talk about the span of each cell. So here for cell P, I take a point in the relative interior and I translate P by W, so it contains the origin and its relative interior, and I take its span, which is a vector subspace. And I write N for my ambient space, Rn, which has lattice Z to the N, 
And then if I have a containment of one polyhedron and another as a face of code, as a facet, then if I take NP mod NQ, this is a line in N mod NQ. And because I'm talking about, this happens to be a rational polyhedron, P and Q are rational polyhedra, this inherits a lattice structure. So there's the lattice in this guy, and this is a, lot, a rational line with respect to that lattice. So I can let V, P slash Q be a primitive integer generator of the ray in this direction from P in here. And I wanna pick the direction that points into P. So really this is my fancy way of saying, you start at this point, you look, you try to walk into this direction of this ray, for instance. And then the balancing condition is that for every code M1 cell in the tropicalization, this is true. So you sum over, which really should be the covering relation, you sum over guys of one dimension bigger containing Q weighted by the, the multiplicity of V of P slash Q, this sums to zero. And here indeed it's satisfied for this guy. It's rare that you get the camera shy one. That's why she's camera shy. All right, and the way this is proved I think of it in terms of intersection theory. Like if there's a there's this tropical intersection theory, and what I could do is I could take um, a torus, and translate it so it intersects so tropicalization intersects like that, and I can also translate so the intersection acts like, intersects like that, and the intersection number is fixed. And if I write down what the balancing condition is, it ends up being that these intersection numbers are fixed. You can also reduce to the initial degeneration of a code M1 cell. So for a code M1 cell, it's going to be the initial degeneration is a D dimensional variety invariant under a D minus one dimensional torus. If you quotient that variety by the torus, you get a curve. And then the balancing condition ends up being the theorem that on a closed curve, if you have a rational function, it has the same number of zeros as it does poles, counted with multiplicity. All right, everyone, all right. So, now I wanna to connect to what I talked about last time. So the, this will be in the case of valued fields, degeneration in the case of constant fields, stratifications. So I'm gonna let X be a sub variety of K star to the N. I'm gonna define a polyhedral complex sigma as above. Remember this was the polyhedral complex that two guys in the relative interior of the same cell had initial degenerations related by translation. And then I'm gonna pick out the torque scheme attached to this polyhedral complex. And now let's look at what happens. I have X contained in the algebraic torus, K star to the N, which is contained as an open torus in the torque variety, in the generic fiber, of this torque scheme. Here, this happens to be the torque variety associated to the recession fan. And then here's my torque scheme. Now I'm gonna close up this, this sub variety. So I get, I take a scheme theoretic closure. So I get a scheme over O. And so this is a sub scheme of my torque scheme. And now I'm gonna look at the closed fiber. Now the closed fiber of the ambient space is a unit, a union of torque varieties that is indexed by the cells of sigma. 
I'm going to write OP for the open torus orbit in, in the closed fiber attached to the polyhedron P. So this is isomorphic to K star to the N minus dimension of P. And I want to think about what happens if when I take the scheme theoretic closure, really this, and I intersect the open torus in the closed fiber. All right, and I'm gonna have to put on some, some mild conditions on sigma. They're automatic based on our construction of sigma. Um, this was studied in detail in a paper of Luxton and Shu, but these ideas go back to an important paper of Tevelev. And here we knew that um, a point W is in the, before we knew the point W is in the tropicalization of X, if and only if the variety cut out by the initial generation is not empty. Um, the more scheme theoretic analog of that theorem is that if I take the scheme theoretic closure of our sub variety and I intersect with the open torus orbit, this is not empty if and only if P is a cell of the tropicalization of X. And if that happens to occur, what I can do is I can take a point W in the relative interior of P, and then the initial degeneration of X is a torus bundle over the intersection whose torus or, or whose fiber is the torus um, given by the span of the cell. So in less fancy, less invariant talk, the initial degeneration, ooh, I wrote that backwards, amazing. Um, the intersection is given as the quotient of the initial degeneration by the torus under which it's invariant. All right, so let's look at our example again. So I'm, I've described what the initial degenerations modulo their invariant torus are. So here, each of these vertices correspond to a line and each of these segments or rays correspond to a point. So I have two lines intersecting at a point, and then I have two mark points on each of them. All right, and how does this fit into the torque scheme picture? So if I were to give you the torque scheme coming from this polyhedral subdivision, what this looks like is this guy looks like a P2, this looks like a P2, and they meet along the line, and then there are our boundary tori, or sorry, boundary lines. These are like the coordinate lines in each P2. So that's what the ambient space looks like, and then the subvariety in the closed fiber cuts out a line in this copy of P2, a line in this copy of P2, and they intersect the coordinate lines in points, and those are these points. So, the degeneration is induced by intersecting the closure, or the initial degenerations are induced by intersecting the closure of X with the torque strata. Now, this picture happens to be nice, and it is, it's pretty nice, but it's, this is not enough to guarantee that the closure of our sub variety inherits, say, semi stability from the ambient torque variety. We want the ambient, we want our, our scheme theoretic closure of our sub variety to inherit good properties from the ambient torque variety. Like, and remember, let's remember how we got good properties on the ambient torque variety. We, there's this theorem of KKMS that we could rescale our polyhedral complex and then subdivide 
to ensure that our torque scheme was semi-stable. And what I really want is for the closure of X to intersect the closed torus orbits of the torque scheme transversely. All right. And this leads to a fancy notion called Shun, which is, which is exactly the condition that if you pick a nice enough um, polyhedral complex, the intersections are transverse. But it's easiest to phrase this in terms of initial degenerations. A subvariety X is shun if all the initial degenerations are smooth or empty. And then we immediately have that if you if your variety is shun, then and you do this to the ambient torque variety to ensure it's semi-stable, then the closure gives you a semi-stable degeneration of X. And, and then the, the components of the initial degeneration are components of the form, the closure of X intersect the, the components of the torque scheme in the closed fiber. And those correspond to vertices of our complex sigma. And there is a map of that called the dual complex. And here what you do is you look at the closed fiber and you've got the top dimensional components and I turn those into vertices. Now the components, are going to be indexed by components of the closed fiber. Just like components of the closed fiber intersected with components of the torque variety. Now this intersection may not be connected, so I have to take components of the intersection. And then associated the edges, if I have an edge in my complex between two vertices, so a bounded edge, I look at components of this intersection. And then the triangles correspond to three components of threefold intersections and so on. And then, and then I use the incidence between cells in my, poly, in my dual complex to come from containment of one component and the other. And this produces a complex gamma and it has a simplicial map to the bounded cells of the tropicalization. So, I mean, I, I think I probably describe this in a too complicated way, but really what you'd be seeing in this particular case would be, you've got a component here and a component here and they intersect here. So this would just signal out this bounded edge. But if this initial degeneration was disconnected, say, I might have like several components like this, or maybe each component is connected, but their intersection is not. So I could get a picture like that. All right, and if X is defined over the complex numbers, the same thing holds. Um, here, the polyhedral complex sigma I get is a fan. Instead of bothering with torque schemes, I can produce a torque variety X. I close up X in this torque variety, or I get a torque variety X sigma. I close up my sub variety in that torque variety. And then uh, cone sigma is in the tropicalization if and only if the intersection of the closure with the torus orbit is not empty. And this gives me a stratification of this closure X. And if X is shun, and I take a smooth subdivision of my fan, then I get a simple normal crossings compactification of X. So that's analogous to having a semi-stable degeneration. So uh, a quick, quick question. Uh, 
uh, in order to achieve uh, shortness of a particular variety embedded in, into a protective space, it suffices just to uh, make a base change. Oh, uh, to, to get shortness or, sorry, I'm not. Yeah, it's actually, it's hard to guarantee shouldness. It's, I think of it as something intrinsic, an actual approach to shouldness, like trying to make something shun is harder, is harder, harder than resolution of singularities. So any proof of, that something is shun or has a shun resolution is secretly a proof of resolution of singularity. So I don't know that you can get anything as nice as anything as nice as this. Like, it's, not, it's not something that uh, you can, um, uh, I don't know, kind of guide by uh, looking at the, um, you know, um, some subdivision and initial degenerations. Oh, it's more complicated than that. Yeah, it's, it's intrinsic. Like somehow you're breaking down the problem of having a resolution of singularities or semi-stable degeneration into two problems. One is that the ambient um, variety has those properties, is smooth or has a semi-stable degeneration. And then the other step is that the sub-variety inherits that property. And shunness is the second part and that's the harder part. So I don't think it's so easy, um, like, but I haven't thought about this stuff in years. All right. And in the case of um, SNC compactifications, the divisors of the compactification are just the guys of the form, the scheme theory, the closure of X intersect the divisors of the torque variety. And there's also a notion of dual complexes. And then in the case of hypersurfaces, this is something that was already known. So here, if I have a defining Laurent polynomial, the its hypersurface is shun if and only if every initial degeneration is a smooth hypersurface. And this can be described in terms of Newton subdivisions. And this condition is called non-degeneracy. And I know of it from the work of Kovansky, although it may go back earlier. And in that case, that means our hypersurfaces breaks into smaller hypersurfaces that live in smooth algebraic subvarieties. All right. And and this is going to set us up for next lecture, which is where in the Shun case, I'm going to try to understand the cohomology of subvarieties, the cohomology of X by closing it up in some torque scheme or torque variety. By which I mean, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Oh, I've had questions. Oh, okay. There's a. Oh, okay. There's a thanks from the chat. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, please ask questions. We still have a lot of time. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I, I guess I'll. Uh, Ask a question because I'm still a little bit confused. What's the relationship between uh, these uh, strata of this? Like when, when you choose a subdivision of, of, of the tropicalization and you uh, close uh, your uh, subvariety of torus in uh, in the storage scheme of, uh, of uh, the value ring, then uh, you you have the strata of the central fiber. And mm -hmm. have it have initial degenerations. Is there right. some some nice way to understand the relationship between the two? Yeah, so they're nearly the same thing. So let me let me write down here is so so what it is is that the initial degeneration is it lives over the residue field and it's invariant under a torus 
of dimension equal to the dimension of the cell in which it's contained. And if you take the initial degeneration and you quotient by that torus, you'll get the intersection with the open part. And this should be the open part. So like in, for instance, for this guy here, the initial degeneration is a line. It was something like, what, like X1 equals one, something like that, or? Um, too early, it's too early in the morning. Right, it's X2 equals one plus, X2 equals minus one. So, so that's what the initial degeneration is. And this is invariant under the torus that scales the X1 coordinate. So if I quotient by that, I will get a point. I'm not doing so good this morning. Um, I'll get a point and that's what that intersection is. Here, if I were to take zero, zero, that's an initial degeneration giving me what? One plus X one plus X two. That's not invariant under any torus and that happens to be what the intersection is. So this is a line living in a copy of P2 corresponding to that vertex. Uh, condition. So there's shunness, uh, but there is a strict condition of tropically smooth. Then additionally, uh, in terms of um, the strata, if you also require that the strata uh, arrangement of five planes or something, then uh, this is the same as tropical smoothness. Oh, I think shunness might just be the old name for tropically smooth. Like there's a notion of a compactification being tropical or fan being tropical, which is equivalent to flatness. And I think that's fallen out of favor. Um, I don't know. I, so I'm not sure what, like, I can't think of what tropically smooth would be except shouldn't, which is much more pleasant to say. Like for the first at least 10 years of my career, I was consistently mispronouncing Shun much worse than I do now. And it really, if you're in, everyone should just use the Yiddish pronunciation. It's easier to say. Like there's a famous pop song from like the thirties or forties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should just use that instead. To me, this sub scheme is is Shane. And it drives um, and like in math, there's um, you know Rick Shane and Chad Shun. <laughs> <laughs>